We're doing a sit down on physical <laughs> therapy evaluation for the pelvic floor. So we've got Caitlin Buck. We've got Allison Gallup. Emily Kelso, Greta, don't forget a Vogel. <laughs> so um, I think this is good that we talk about because people are usually really nervous to come mm-hmm. in for the first appointment. Mm-hmm. Um, like, do y'all have people who say, I don't know why I'm here? Yes. yes. Yeah. Or what is this? What is what this? What are we doing today? Yeah. What, what am I doing here? Or the ones that come in their workout gear because they think they're going to like. Go on a track. Yeah. 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 They're like, yeah. where's all the equipment? Or what do I wear? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Doesn't yeah. matter. Nothing. It's fine. Take it off. It's coming off. Yeah. It's coming off. <laughs> Sorry. So, okay. So the first thing is what is the pelvic floor, right? Because they're like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, Emily, how are you explaining? Like, what is the pelvic floor? The pelvic floor is a collection of muscles, nerves, connective tissue that supports your bladder, your bowel, um, sexual function controls that. And so it's very important and it's kind of like the, the, you know, the, one of the most important things that no one knows about. And the so, center of your body. Yeah, yeah. the center of your body. It's, exactly. it's the foundation. It's foundation. the foundation. It holds yeah. your insides in. Yeah, it holds everything up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah, I think that, like, next to the brain and the heart and the lungs, I mean, like, come on. If your pelvic floor doesn't work, you're not working. Right. right. Yeah. Well, and I also tell them, like, the pelvic floor is part of our core. Yeah. So pelvic floor is on the bottom. Yeah. The bifid yeah. is at the top. Yeah. Core is from your ribs through the knees. The canister yeah. around yeah. the side is your abdominals, your lumbar back muscles. Yeah. Like, it's mm-hmm. very important, and we use it all the time. Right. And um, the other thing that I find really interesting is men really – a lot of men don't think they have a pelvic floor. Mm-mm. Yeah. Huh. A and lot it's of true because they don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. a lot of men think they're the only person. <laughs> that was a joke. I was like, <laughs> oh, I, like, I totally missed it. Like, wait, 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 I was like, it. she's so serious. I'm like, and they don't have a pelvic they, floor. I'm like, uh, girl. <laughs> I didn't hear that part. Uh, um, they don't. No, they don't. So, okay. So let's, let's divide this up and talk about women. And we'll talk about men because they come in for different things and similar things. But still, like, I think the information that's useful to know is, is, is helpful if we divide it up. So, like, with women, okay, we see women for urinary leakage, right? Mm-hmm. We see women for pain. Mm-hmm. We see women for post-surgical issues. Mm-hmm. So when a woman has pain, like, what kind of pain are they coming to you for? Pain with intercourse. Which is also sex. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> bladder pain, bladder pain, pain. Bladder, bladder pain, pain. sitting pain, sitting pain, sitting pain. pain. Yeah. clitoral pain, yes, mm-hmm. uh, tailbone pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's not always like with sex or intercourse, as Greta likes to call it. <laughs> it's not always with coitus. It can be also with like just urinating parts. So, like, mm-hmm. I get a UTI yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Or I feel like I have a UTI, but all I don't time. have a UTI. Mm-hmm. Can't use tampons. Can't use tampons. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Um. So. And then the leakage, you know, we treat like urgency, urgency, frequency, frequency. I go all the time. Getting up at night. Getting, Getting up, up at night. At night. Mm-hmm. Um, like I leak when I cough and sneeze. Mm-hmm. Which most people think is normal and it's not. And it's mm-hmm. not. And it's Especially not the price stuff. you pay for getting older either. No. Or having kids. Or, having or kids. having kids. Yeah. And yeah. even though we work at a urology, Austin, we also talk about poop. We yeah. talk, and yeah. Allie <laughs> likes to bring in poop. Yeah. Because it's really important. It actually has a big role on how, I mean, it sits right next to your bowel, sit right next to your right. bladder. Chronic yeah. constipation yeah. Yeah, is really we, common. That can mm-hmm. lead towards prolapse, can lead all sorts of issues. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and pain. And, you know, and it, yeah. like, you're right. You're, I like to make fun of you for talking about poop. <laughs> it's so right. <laughs> but poop is important. Poop is important because <laughs> when, it, when you're not having good bowel movements, if say if you're constipated and your stool's not coming out, it will push on exactly. your bladder yeah. right. and make you leak mm-hmm. or make you make you leak, pee up, feel pee like you have to go, mm-hmm. give you urges to go. Yeah, and I yeah. think we we are really good at catching that and yeah. linking mm-hmm. these. Yeah, yeah, because even as we work in urology practice, yeah. yes. like, that's something that's still really important because it's part, mm-hmm. as you were saying, it's part of the bowels are you know, with the pelvic floor, yes, they right. are very closely linked. So sometimes yeah. the bladder is 
the bladder talk is the symptom for like the true cause of the problem, which right, could be right. the constipation right, or like right, improper right, bowel right. movements. There's also a lot improper. of nerves that go to the yes. bladder. Yes. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Yes. Um, okay. So, Greta, what kind of questions do you ask about an, an eval? So, a ton. A ton. Uh, like, what yeah, types of questions about the bladder? Do about you the ask? bladder. Okay, I was like, yeah. Which You're area? like, where do I start? Um, how are you doing? How, is how a question many... I ask. <laughs> sure, sure. Where do you come from? <laughs> where do you come from? Um, what do you like to do? No. Um, how many times do you wake up at night? Um, could you sit through a movie and not have to use the restroom? Uh-huh. Is there pain with urination? Yeah. Um, do you feel empty when you're done? You know, a yeah. lot of people don't. A lot of people go back and do the double void. Or they'll say like, well, I am empty because my doctor did an ultrasound. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't care about the ultrasound. What is your brain telling yeah. you? Is your brain feel empty? Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. that's the annoying part. Mm-hmm. If yeah. your brain doesn't feel empty, that's what we got to fix. We asked sure. about the flow. The, yep. flow. the flow. People yeah. are like, you want to know how? I, like, is it a trickle or is it a spray? Does it go one direction? Does it go left or right? And they're like, oh, I don't <laughs> It's know. like a light I've show. never yeah. paid attention yeah. to yeah. it. Yeah, they come back and tell us. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. But it's all in, yeah. it's like detective work. We try yeah. to ask all these questions because we have to figure out what the cause is, like what's going on muscularly. Yeah. Ask if people hover. Yeah, yeah. that's a big thing. Yeah. Like a do you squat? Do you, do you squat? sit all yeah. the way? Do you totally yeah. relax? Yeah. yeah. Like a drone. Like, like a drone. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Ali, you love talking about poo-poo. What kind of poo-poo questions do you ask? Um, well, I ask about how often they're going. How often do you poo-poo? Um, is it like every day? Is, are you regular? Are you going every three days? Um, what does it look like? Is it coming out in segments? Do you feel like you're getting empty all the way? Does it feel like it gets stuck? Is it coming out small? Is it coming out normal? Like what you would think normal size would be? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're like blown away on the like depth of the questions yeah. that we ask. And they always apologize. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm like, do you have leakage? Do you feel like you have Like I want to know. Do you have gashes? <laughs> like all those, mm-hmm. our questions are important. I say, yeah. and the reason why we ask these because they're like, why do you want to know this mm-hmm. stuff? Because it tells us a lot about what's going on internally. Yeah. What could be going on with your pelvic floor? Yeah. Um, what could be going on with the connective tissue? Yeah. With your diet. So, with, with your, your diet. diet. Yeah. yeah. We talk about those kind of things mm-hmm. too. Yeah. You know, and how to make things better. Mm-hmm. Position changes. And yeah. Like that that mm-hmm. can help us. So, Emily, do you ask your questions about anything other than bladder and bowel movements? Yes. What do you ask them about, Emily? Well, <laughs> the most exciting part, which is sexual function. It is the most exciting and part. And <laughs> I usually start by just saying, you know, are you sexually active? And and so if they say no, then I still explore, you know, if are you self-stimulating at all? Do you have orgasms? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've had a woman, a patient the other day that told me she did, she's never had an orgasm in her whole life. Mm-hmm. She, mm-hmm. You know, and so that is something that is important. Orgasms are part of our sexual function and and, um, and so we want. It can also be indicative of something, of something else that's going on, yeah. right? right? Like the fact yeah. that you're not having orgasms yeah. means, oh, yeah, we need to explore this because yeah. why? That, why aren't yeah, you yeah, having yeah. orgasms? And it's yeah. usually right. something that's been going on for, for a long yeah. time. And I mean, not always. Usually but, related to the yeah. bladder and bowel stuff. Like they're right. all so connected. Mm-hmm. That's true. And then, so... Do people feel comfortable telling you about this? Um, yes and no. I mean, I tell them, you know, look, this is, I try to prep them in the beginning and mm-hmm. say, we're, we're, I'm going to ask you questions about all of these things because it gives me a good, clear picture of how mm-hmm. thing, these things are functioning and what could be going on and how I can help you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's all related. And so um, if they're not comfortable, they, you know, they kind of, they don't talk about it, but but history taking can happen through the whole yeah. time that you see a right. patient. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you just yeah. you want to feel out what their comfort level yeah. is, and then mm-hmm. you just you just leave it alone. I'm not going to keep asking questions. Yeah. It's amazing how many times, like after we start doing treatment, yeah. Yeah. that people are like, "I forgot to mention," uh-huh. yeah. and then yeah. they yeah. tell you something that's really yeah. relevant mm-hmm. to what's going on or important information. You're like, later on, that's yeah, good yeah. to know. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. For telling Definitely. me, yeah. 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 Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's true. That's true. So, okay. What does a pelvic floor physical therapy exam for a woman look like in your appointments, Caitlin? Um, Well, after I do all the history taking, and I try to get them really comfortable during that. Like you give a look with me. (laughs) Like incense. Soft music. Mm -hmm. um, Just so they're comfortable with me. (laughs) Yeah, I'm back to (laughs) Zine. A um, massage. No, no massages. To my room. No massages. Um, <laughs> no massages. Uh, no massages. Yeah, no even massage. say that word. Yeah, that's, yeah. no, I know. It's bad. 
Um, I do a vulvar exam on all of the Hold women. Up. What's a vulva? What's a vulva? <laughs> I have to teach them what that is too. Yeah. So the vulva is the outside of your vagina, the genitals, mm -hmm. um, everything you can see in a mirror if you were to put a mirror down there. So I teach them that. Um, and I explain to them why I want to do this exam. Um, it's important to look for um, the health of the tissue and how that can affect different symptoms. Um, and if it's necessary, I do a vaginal exam mm -hmm. internally, but I don't do that on every woman. Mm -hmm. um, and I walk them through, you know, what I'm looking at and why it's relevant. And if I have any uh, suggestions for what they change in their lifestyle, whether it's stop using soap or mm -hmm. um, how to cleanse themselves or if they could use any topical ointments from their doctor, et cetera. Um, just so they feel more involved in the whole process and they're yeah. not like, who's yeah. this woman staring at me? Yeah. yeah. So. And it's not like a gyno exam where it's more uncomfortable. Yeah. That's so true. You have I to really them, remind them that. We don't use stirrups. We don't use a speculum. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. But still they'll sit at the end of the table. Yeah. 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 No, it's much more pleasant than that. And it's we're much very more clear pleasant. about like what we're looking at and why mm -hmm. we're looking at it, mm -hmm. just to make them feel like there's a there's a reason why. Yeah, we're doing and not it. just right. just to do it. Exactly. Yeah, and it can tell you so much. Exactly. Like I've learned so much in this specialty about atrophy mm -hmm. and just how many women haven't. haven't really been observed. Like haven't had their vulva looked at. It's all mm -hmm. about the inside. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what's um, atrophy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What is that? We could have a whole talk just about atrophy. Really. Atrophy. What yeah. is that? So, I don't know. How would you describe what atrophy is? Because I think women have heard atrophy. They but think of like muscle. Yeah. Muscle yeah. weakness. Yeah. Right? Like, but you don't know what, what is atrophy? What does that look like? Unhealthy tissue. Unhealthy tissue. What does that look like? It could look like um, a small clitoral glands, or it could look like clitoris. the labia. A lot of women are concerned if they have large floppy labia and yeah. I have to tell them no that's good that's, that's normal. healthy like yeah. we want that when your labia goes away when it like worry. disappears mm -hmm. that's yeah. atrophy yeah mm -hmm. that's yeah. true that's true so okay so you you talk to them you ask really invasive questions you do a very invasive look at their vulva mm -hmm. um and then like you give them something to do like what you give them a stretch like what do you give them like do you give them one thing to start changing about their lifestyle yeah. breathing yeah. properly yeah breathing <laughs> properly <laughs> diaphragmatic breathing is huge for everyone everyone right? oh, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. sure. game changer yeah. it's so connected to your pelvic floor so i think at least on the first day making sure they're breathing correctly because yes. we do that all the time mm -hmm. and we often don't relax our abs yeah we're always yeah. told like keep it tight and that's yeah. not always keep great it tight, yeah. keep it right so mm -hmm. a, yeah. lot of, a lot of women come thinking that we're just going to give them a bunch of Kegel exercises. Yes. And so I would say majority of our patients are dealing more with tension issues than mm -hmm. they are with laxity, meaning mm -hmm. weak tissue, weak, weak muscles. And so we tell them, stop the Kegels. Mm -hmm. But again, it's that's why the evaluation is really important because we have to figure out, I keep saying detective work, we have to figure out like what's the cause, what's, what's going on, and what are the things that they can do mm -hmm. between right. now and our next visit. So it may look a little different for everybody, but yeah, mm -hmm. breathing is one that we often get because we do see so much tension. Right, and that's a great yeah. point. There's yeah. such a misconception about pelvic floor and Kegels. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so bad. I get yeah. stopped, just just people On knowing. the street? <laughs> On the street. Rachel Meadow? Are you Rachel yeah. Meadow? <laughs> and should I do Kegels? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Oh my gosh. No, just between tension and, sh and weakness. I mean, or tension and strength. Um, most people have tension and not weakness. Most people so have wild. Yeah. Yeah. You can true. have leakage and still have tension. tension. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Form of yes. Yep. Yeah. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what are the age ranges of women that you see? All oh, over gosh. the board. All over the board. Yeah. yeah. 1920 to 95. Yeah. 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 96. We're not appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it off at 95. So, okay. So that's a, that's a pretty good look at women, men. Half of my load is men. Oh, yeah. What percentage of your load is male patients? Easily 50, 60%. Yeah. Right what now. is yours? Same. 50, 60. What yeah, is yours? Yeah, it's about half and half. Yeah. I, I mean, say. it's insane. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. insane. Mm -hmm. So, we, I, I think Urology Austin is doing a really good job of um, starting to really understand like when um, some of their patients are appropriate for pelvic floor physical therapy mm -hmm. referrals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's mm -hmm. different than with women. I mean, I feel like. It's interesting because I think men really do go through a lot for specifically pelvic pain before they see a pelvic floor therapist. Right. Not that right. women don't, because right. there are there is a type of 
set of symptoms where women really also go through the ringer, but men, man, men, man. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so like, do you have men coming in for leakage outside of prostatectomy, prostate cancer issues? Yeah. Yes. yes. You get yes. some of that, right? Mm -hmm. But what's the number one reason men are typically coming to you? Pain. 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 Yeah. Pain, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so like, where are these men hurting, Emily? Shaft of their penis, uh -huh. when they pee, burning um, at the tip of the penis. Yes. Um, scrotum, testicles, rectal. the area between, yeah, the rectum. Rectized. Really any of, any part Tailbone. of the genital. Yes. Yeah, like yeah. The the abdominal, 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 abdominal bladder. Even you know, low back pain, low a lot back, of times is associated. Pain. But yeah, the perineum, pain. so yeah. a lot of guys don't yeah. know what the perineum is, and they, yeah. they, they, they want to say the word taint, but they're like, yeah. is that appropriate? It's just my... They say behind my scrotum. I'm like, yeah, yeah. the perineum call, is yeah. the space between yeah. the scrotum and the penis. <laughs> right, right, right. Is that what you're talking about? And they're like, yes, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, okay, so do you still ask the same types of questions to men about their history, their bladder, their yeah. bowels, and yeah. sexual yeah. function? Yeah, for sure. Maybe, yeah. So it's really interesting. Um, one common complaint I get from men is after ejaculating. They have pain. Do y'all y'all get that too, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. often come up on the first visit, though. Like, oh, it'll, it'll they either won't be give like it a to denial. you. Yeah, they'll I deny think, it. Well, I think they're nervous. Yeah, mm -hmm. for some men, they, they get nervous talking about sex with me. Yeah, so I'm like, tell me about it. I want to know yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it does come up. It so does come up, and it's it's <laughs> <laughs> and it's very common. Okay, so what are the age ranges for guys that y'all are treating? Oh. I see the young, youngest I have right now is 18. 18 yeah, is your youngest right now. Teenager. Yours is 18? Yeah. Well, the youngest you've ever seen, Emily. Um, probably young 20s. Yeah. yeah. 21, mm -hmm. 23, something like that with um, pain. I've, the youngest guy I've ever seen was 15. Mm -hmm. um, and then the oldest when he was like in his 90s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like, the, what's the average age, Greta, that you think you're seeing? For, For pain? pain? Yeah. Like, Probably, probably mid 30, 20s. 40. Yeah, yeah, it's like they're not yeah. that old, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. you're really it's athletic, like yeah, individual, athletic. or it's or like an engineer, engineer. Or you're a professional, mm -hmm. type okay. professional, yes, type A, driven, type A, driven, yeah. ambitious, executive, yeah, right. journey, mm -hmm. a lot of stress in but there, by Tension. far, intention, <laughs> engineers, yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. very common. That's another place I want to leave our cards and like engineer <laughs> bathrooms, you know, like at their. Place of business. Or any one of the tech buildings. So. Any yeah, tech building in town. They're all, yes. they're all software engineers. Um, there's a coffee a shop them. here in yeah. town where I think there's a lot of programmers just want to throw my cards oh out, my like God. dollar bills. <laughs> yeah. it's a make it right. Yeah, make it rain cards. <laughs> and they're probably wondering why. Why is it the engineers? Why is it the engineers? Yeah. Why is it the engineers? I really don't know. <laughs> they sit, they sit, they sit. I, I'm like astounded. They sit a lot. They sit a lot. They sit a lot. Sit a lot. Yeah. We were not yeah. designed to sit as a human being. We yeah. were not designed to sit. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. stand up desks have been really helpful for people. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, I try to get people like get up every. You think you're getting up enough by getting up every two hours? Mm -hmm. I want you up like every thirty to forty five yeah. minutes. Yeah. It sounds like a lot. I say every fifteen if minutes. Take, <laughs> yeah. If you take yeah. a call, take it. Like stand up. Take yeah. it on the phone, yeah. standing. Walk around your office. Mm -hmm. um, go yeah. for a walk. Get a get a cup of water. Go visit. You know, people mm -hmm. go next door. Go visit your buddy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. There's the sitting, but there's something about the personality sure. that is that where engineering is interesting to them, right? Yeah. So it's it's um, it's uh, wanting to understand things and wanting to have a plan and wanting to have a pattern Very and wanting analytical. to have a uh, analytical analytical, yeah. analytical yeah. mind. Mm -hmm. There's something about the analytical, analytical mind for the man and the woman where it makes the pelvic floor muscles tense yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. for years and years, mm -hmm. and that will turn into pain. Right. Right. It's so Yeah, and they may not be symptomatic until yeah. it's just like until. This, it's just this snowball effect. Exactly. And then it takes one incident where they feel like they have like an infection, yeah. and they actually never test positive, yeah. but they have all the symptoms, just yeah. like a woman with urinary tract mm -hmm. symptoms yeah. of infection. And, they and they're still treated it. for it, too. And they're still treated yeah. for it, and they've gone through four rounds of antibiotics, yeah. and they've seen no change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's well, they it's, will see a change with antibiotics. They may. And yeah. 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 But it comes back, and it's extremely frustrating, yes. and then that brings more tension and frustration. Yeah. And it's just this cyclical thing where it's 
there's a lot of musculoskeletal stuff that yeah. we can address if just breaking that pain cycle. And too. you can just plug in instead of like an infection or a mm-hmm. pseudo infection, you can plug in like a traumatic or stressful life event. Or sure. Maybe just like a crazy stressful month at work mm-hmm. or a divorce mm-hmm. or a, a new family baby. sickness yeah. or a new baby. Yeah. Like that can just turn the pelvic floor mm-hmm. muscle tension to overdrive and now they feel it talking. Mm-hmm. And the talking yeah. is like all the stuff that Emily mentioned. Pain at the tip of my penis. I pee all the time. It burns when I pee. Now my erections are maybe are painful or I heard after an orgasm. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fascinating. Yeah. So so how do your so men don't have vulvas? Some do. No. They may have kids and they may have a Volvo. Um Volvo. But but what do we look at with men if they don't have vulvas? They still have a pelvic floor. So how how what does their exam look like? Who wants to talk about that? Who wants to talk about the I'll jump, into, do, jump into it. Um, well, if they're like a leakage patient, it's important to look at the skin around the anus yeah. to make sure there's no tearing, uh, make sure that's looking healthy, especially pre and post op. Super yeah. important. Yeah. It's kind of a nice icebreaker, too, in an eval. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to look, look at your anus. I know we just met, but <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to get close really quick. Um, no, I think that's super important to look at. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, if they're okay with doing an internal exam that day, yeah, just to make sure a Kegel's right, uh, or for the leakage patient, for the leakage mm-hmm. patient, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. What do you look at for the pain patients, guys who are have who are pain? For your eval, what do you mm-hmm. do? So it, for me, depends on what their symptoms are mm-hmm. or medical history. So. Um, I will look a lot at the connective tissue restrictions. Well, so, what body part? So it again, it's if it depends like what's going on. So if they have, do you look at the penis? Occasionally we do. Okay. Yeah. In fact, a lot of times because there's one specific muscle, the bulbous spondylosis, mm-hmm. is a really important muscle for mm-hmm. urinary and erectile function, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's one that often is a source of pain too mm-hmm. for people, mm-hmm. especially from coming from the perineum. Yeah. 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 But immediately in the evaluation, yeah. we a lot of times go to actually the abdominal connective, yeah. connective tissue. Yeah. It's a layer under the skin and the fat that affects your nerve mobility and mm-hmm. how well your nerves are moving. And your whole nervous pain system. and everything you feel yeah. is controlled by your nervous system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we can help kind of and also, that down. like embryologically, like in develop not embryologically, but in utero with with human development, all the genitals and reproductive parts descend from the abdominal cavity. Mm-hmm. Right. So like, I think a lot of men are surprised like that I'll start at their abs 99.9% yeah. of the time mm-hmm. and I'll do some treatment there. Yeah. That is my evaluation. Like that's yeah. what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And I don't care if they have tailbone pain, if they have rectal pain, if they have testicle pain, if they have perineal pain, I'll still, or penis pain. I'll start there and they're like, well, that's not, did you hear what I said? <laughs> my pain is on my left butt cheek. I'm like, yeah, I heard, I heard yeah. you. <laughs> so I think that's really interesting. They get a lot of good results that way too. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, and men breathing, do you teach them breathing? Absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think this is good. I, um, I think we all treat pretty similarly or you evaluate pretty similarly, yeah. which yeah. is a nice thing. We're all on the same page. So high five for that. Good job guys. Another, good job. Another round of high five. Another round of high five. Get there. <laughs>